Instrument approaches are divided into precision, non-precision, and approaches with vertical guidance. A non-precision approach is a clearance to descend at a fix to an MSL altitude called a minimum descent altitude, or MDA. The airplane is then flown in level flight at the MDA with the pilot hunting for the airport. If the airport or runway is not in sight, at a certain time or point, the hunting license expires. The missed approach comes next. The missed approach for some non-precision approaches starts on the basis of ground speed and time to fly from the final approach fix to the missed approach point. Other approaches have a fix where the missed approach begins. On precision approaches, the airplane intercepts and follows the glide slope to an MSL altitude called the decision altitude, or DA. If the runway environment is not in sight at the DA, the missed approach comes next. Incidentally, some use the term decision height instead of decision altitude. Decision height is really the height above the threshold elevation. Like a precision approach, an approach with vertical guidance has both course and glide path information, but it is not as accurate as a precision approach. A clearance for an instrument approach is authorization to descend to the MDA or DA as appropriate while following the procedure. In order to descend below the MDA or DA, you must have the runway itself, runway markings, or approach or runway lights in sight. In addition, the flight visibility cannot be less than specified on the approach chart and the aircraft must be in a position from which a descent to the runway can be made at a normal rate. If these conditions do not prevail at the missed approach point or DA, you must make a missed approach. If a descent from DA or MDA is started and because of low fog or other restrictions to visibility the required conditions no longer exist, a missed approach must be made. Approach charts are a detailed blueprint for an instrument approach. Nothing is omitted or left to the pilot's imagination. There are specific instructions for each part of the approach. With some minor differences, FAA and Jeppesen approach charts both give a from top to bottom presentation of information about the procedure. To get started, the top of the chart has the pilot briefing information. For the initial approach segment, the necessary information is in the plan, or bird's eye view. The approach has already started when the most pertinent information is in the profile view. The approach is almost finished when the information about how low you can go and the flight visibility required is in the minimum section. When you look at an approach chart, review the pilot briefing information area first. The top row of boxes has the primary navigation information, final approach course, and airport and runway data. The next row contains procedure notes and restrictions, icons if non-standard alternate and or takeoff minimums apply, approach lighting symbols if installed, and then the missed approach procedure. The third row has the communications frequencies in the order needed during an approach. Let's look at the chart for the runway 10 VOR approach at Riverton, Wyoming. Top and bottom left margins show the city and state, and the approach, runway number, and airport name are on the right. If the approach is not straight into a runway, the approach is identified by a letter, like the VOR Alpha, at the Greenwood Municipal Airport in Indiana. There may or may not be a VOR Bravo approach at Greenwood. Using the letter helps identify specific approaches. Letters are also used if there are multiple straight-in approaches of the same type to a runway. In this case, they start at the end of the alphabet and work backwards. Frequencies for all nav aids used in the approach are shown on the plan view. The Morse identifier for a primary approach nav aid will be shown in the plan view. Identifiers are not always shown for secondary nav aids that provide intersection identification along the approach. Pilot intersection is labeled as an initial approach fix, or IAF. Pilot can be identified as the intersection of the 281-degree radial of Riverton and the 195-degree radial of Boysen Reservoir VOR.
Pilot can also be identified as the 6.5 DME fix on the 281 degree radial of Riverton. If you're wondering about that big ink blot on the plan view, that is Ocean Lake, located northwest of the Riverton Regional Airport. Approach charts show large bodies of water such as this in the plan view. At some airports, high terrain is depicted in the plan view using colored contours. A minimum altitude, magnetic course, and distance for the course from Riverton VOR to Pilot is given for airplanes transitioning to the approach over the VOR. Airplanes using this transition will turn around by making the procedure turn. The procedure turn symbol is the half-barbed arrow with the magnetic courses. Later, we'll discuss different ways to perform the procedure turn, but however it's done, it must be done on the side of the approach course shown. At the top of the profile view is the instruction to remain within 10 nautical miles. The reason for the limitation is the approach planners were very enthusiastic searching for obstructions within 10 nautical miles of pilot and on the north side of the approach course. Their enthusiasm diminished on the south side of the 281-degree radial and beyond 10 nautical miles.